Hello and welcome to a tutorial for students studying module Comp 1342 at Worcester University. It's now just over a week to go to hand in for the Edge and After Effects assignments. And I know some of you have been struggling a little bit with Edge. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a quick demonstration how you'd create something that would pass this module. It's going to be fairly quick, it's going to be fairly simple. I'm not going to create something today that will get you a grade A or a grade B. I'm just going to create something quick and easy that would pass the module for you. So let's get started. We'll create a new document. And because we're just being very simple about this, we're going to leave everything at the defaults. Right, let's have a look at what the requirements actually are for this module. So I've got the assignment brief here. If I move the right window onto the screen, there we go. We're going to develop a video that's between 45 and 90 seconds long. Now that's actually the bit that's a bit difficult to get your head around because there's interactivity going to be involved in this, which means that whoever's watching it might choose to press a button after five seconds, might choose to press a button after 25 seconds. You can't really judge that. What we're going to do here is we're not going to sit with a stopwatch and time you. What we're going to do is we're going to see if it keeps us interested for at least 45 seconds. And if it can do that, it's fine. What we're doing overall is we're picking a specific firm or industry, or maybe we want to pick a hobby or sporting interest, and we will create a web advertisement campaign for that hobby, firm, industry, or sporting interest. The one I've chosen today for this demo is quilts. Quilt making is a fun, exciting hobby for everybody. And it's also something I just found some nice images for pretty quickly. And that was really what I was going for, something quick and easy. The requirements we've got to have beyond the time limit, we've also got to have text in there, we've got to have images, we've got to have animation, we've got to have audio, and we've got to have interactivity. So that's really our shopping list of techniques, and this video is going to show you very quickly how to do each one of those things. So let's move this out of the way. The first thing I've done is I've gone onto the internet and I've found some assets that I can use in this presentation. I've found a sewing machine sound that you may have seen earlier. I dragged the wrong window on. It's really quite an annoying sound and it's just going to loop in the background. There we go, that's going to drive visitors to this website mad, but it's a requirement, so I'm going to put it in. And what I could do is I could go to the file and I could file menu and open it from there. I'm just going to drag it in, that's going to be the easiest way to do things just for this demo. And you'll see it's appeared in our library. And it's also appeared with some settings over here. What we're gonna have this do is we're gonna have this be in the background continually looping whenever this advert's on screen. To do that, we automatically play by choosing autoplay and we loop by choosing loop. And we're just gonna turn preload off because preload causes a few problems occasionally. Right, so we're ready to do our first little test of our requirements. We're going to test that we've hit this requirement to have sound by previewing in a browser. Go up to the file menu. There's an option there to preview in whichever browser you've got. And it shows you the keyboard shortcut. I'm on a Macintosh, so it looks slightly different to what it looks like on your PCs, but the idea is the same. Opens a browser. Don't know if you can hear that. I'll turn it up. We have an annoying sound looping in the background. So we've already hit one of the requirements. That's just going to sit there the whole time and looping. But for the purpose of this demo and not driving myself mad, I'm now going to turn my speakers off so you don't hear that again. But it's always going to be there in the background. It's always going to hit that requirement. Next requirement, we must have images. And I've gone onto the web, found some pictures of quilts. And I've opened it up in a preview here. Let's just double click that. There we go. We can see lots of pictures of quilts. And I've gone into Photoshop and done two things with these. First thing I've done is I've made them 400 pixels high. See, 400 pixels is the height of our edge uh, work. The reason I've made them all the same size is these are gonna be sliding across in the background on a continuously looping animation. And the thing about edge is, is it has to do a lot of maths if it's resizing images. It's much easier if you give it images at the right size to start with. So I've made all these images the size I want them already, and I've stuck them together in one big long image that ends with the same thing it starts with. And that's gonna help me create a loop. So I've made things easier for myself by doing a lot of the work in advance in Photoshop. Just close that preview and I'm going to bring that in. And there it is. It's appeared in our library, it's quilts.jpg. 
and it's appeared on our timeline down here and it's appeared in the preview window here. I'm going to drag it to the position I actually want it to be, want it to start off as far left as it needs to be. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. This is the only time I'm going to cheat in this presentation. I'm going to hit the 45 second requirement in one go. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make this an animation that slides across the screen continuously and loops every 45 seconds. So there's no way I could possibly fail the hitting 45 seconds worth of stuff mark because this background on its own is going to be 45 seconds long. It's not really a great way of hitting the requirements, but it is technically going to work. So let's see how we add an animation to this that lasts for 45 seconds. First thing to realize is that the timeline at the moment is showing us six seconds or even 0.6 seconds. Let's zoom right out until we get 45 seconds on the screen. We're going to be controlling the position of this. So we're going to start by sticking a pin in the timeline. And you'll see that little blue dot appears. We're going to go to 45 seconds. You'll see that yellow thing appears that says we're creating an animation. I'm just going to slide this over all the way so that it ends up with this left edge where it started. And you'll see in our timeline, it's animated from zero pixels to 286 pixels for the left position. And the top has also got a bit of animation on it that we didn't need. And that's just because I was dragging up and down on the way. So let's get rid of that. Let's just select these keyframes on the timeline, same way you do in After Effects, and hit delete to get rid of them. So if I look through what we've got on the timeline, we've now got a 45 second thing that slides from one side to the other. And when it finishes, it's at this point, which is the same as the point it starts at, so it's just going to look to the viewer like it's continuously going on forever. So we've hit another part of our requirements. We've hit three now. We've hit the requirement for sound, we've hit the requirement for images, and we've hit the requirement for it lasting 45 seconds, and we've actually hit the requirement for having some animation in there. So only two things we've really left to hit here. We've got to have text, and we've got to have interactivity. Text is nice and easy. I'll do that bit now. We'll go back to our stage. We'll hit the D to sort some text out. And we'll type in, oops, let's get our capital letters right. Click to visit quilts.com. And there we go, we've added some text. It's appeared on our stage. And technically that does hit the requirement for there being some text on here, but actually it's really difficult to read, it's pretty tiny. Let's make it quite a bit bigger and let's change its color to white so we can really see what it says a bit better. So we're gonna need something that we can click. We're gonna need a button with a bit of interactivity on it. So let's find something we can use as a button. And because I love bad jokes, I've got a PNG file of a button. There we go. And you're going to click the button to visit quilts.com. Let's just drag this into a slightly nicer position. About there. Let's move the text up a little bit. There we go. We've got a button you can click to visit quilts.com. Doesn't work at the moment because we need to understand a little bit about how we put interactivity into Edge. The main thing to learn about interactivity is that it happens really with symbols. We need to turn this from being a button into being a symbol. The way we'll do that is we'll right click and convert to symbol. It prompts us to give our symbol a name. Um, I could name it button, but that would just get really confusing because it's a picture of a button that's a button that's called button. So I'm just going to leave that a symbol one. You'd probably want to pick a, a name that identifies it because to be honest, you're going to really need more than one button in your things. I'm just doing the bare minimum here. The other thing is I'm going to turn off auto playing of a timeline. And this is the bit where you actually try and understand what's going on here. Symbols have their own timeline. And that's where I'm going to put a little bit of animation on this. I don't want that animation to play automatically. I want that to play when the mouse rolls over the symbol. So turn off auto play, click OK. There we go. And you'll see if we look at our timeline, I'm just going to minimize some of these things here. So it's a little less confusing to look at. This is now called symbol one. And it's appeared in our library as a symbol. What we can do to symbols is we can add actions to them. We right click, 
we'll have a look at what actions are currently there and add some more. At the moment, there are no actions. But there's a list of possibilities for the actions we can have. We can have mouse over, we can have double click, we can have click, we can have the mouse entering this particular part of the screen, we can have an iPad touch movement on it. What we're actually going to do is we're going to do a click responsive movement and we want a click to link in a new window to a website. And I'll show you a bit more about this window here in a minute, but for now I'm just going to do a quick change to the text. The text defaults to opening up adobe.com. We're going to make it open up quilts.com by just changing that there. We'll hit close. And if we preview in a browser, we have annoying sound, we have text, we have a slidey thing, and we have, if we click this, interactivity that takes us to quilts.com. So we've actually hit every single requirement. This would get you a pass. This would get you a terrible pass, but it would get you a pass. Let's make it a little bit more interesting by putting some animation on that button. And this is where this particular tutorial ends, but I've done the button animation in a separate tutorial because I know some of you wanted to look at just that part and didn't want to wade through the whole lot. So if you take the second YouTube video that there's a link to here, that'll show you how to stick some animation on this button. There's lots of things you could do to make this a whole lot better. For a start, you could look at the requirements for a higher grade. Here they are. And they're things like uh, mouse cursors, triggers, events, and actions. Well, we've actually got a trigger in there. We've got an action. Um, fades in opacity, they're quite easy to do. Bedded media, again, quite easy to do. Hyperlinks, that's actually up there as a requirement for a B. And that's something we've already put in because we've got that hyperlink to quilts.com. So my advice is once you've got the basics in place, look at extra things you can do. Let's look at something we just had really quickly on this. I just want to give you another little tip. With our symbol selected, let's have a look at cursor. The moment it just automatically sets, if we set our cursor to a pointer, that'll give us a clue that this is a clickable thing. And that's something you should do for all your clickable things. If I now preview this, we've got the normal arrow pointer cursor. When we roll over here, oh, it's a clickable thing. And we can tell because the cursor's changed. That's a useful little cue that you can give your visitors. Boost your marks, and as you can see, it only took us about two button clicks to add. So that's a really useful little thing to do. Another thing, um, opacity. That was something that we looked at in the requirements for higher grade. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little rectangle, oops, a little rectangle, that actually worked, over this part of the screen. Let's try that again. I'm just gonna put a little rectangle over this part of the screen. There we go. And I'm going to make that semi-transparent and black so that it sort of makes the text easier to read by darkening up the quilt behind it. So there we go, it's black, and we're now going to look at its opacity. Turn its opacity down to about oh, 42%. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it behind the text and the button. And we can do that by just dragging it, the same way we do in uh, After Effects, but we don't drag it here, we drag it over here in this list of elements. So there we go, we've dragged it behind everything else. Didn't quite mean to do that, we actually want the quilts to be behind it. So there we go, reorder things in the right order. And we're now hitting one of the more advanced requirements, which is to show that we know how to use opacity. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to add eases into your timeline. So let's try adding a bit of timeline animation. At the moment we haven't got any animation apart from that uh, thing appearing, but let's, so let's go to here we'll take the text, and because we've got the blue button set, it's automatically putting keyframes in. So we'll put the position of this maybe there, and we'll go back in the timeline, and we'll put the position over there. And now if we look at this, we should see a bit of animation. And we don't, because I've not done that right. Let's try it again, there we go. And there we see we've now add, correctly added a bit of animation to the position. So now this is, starts off with it being off the screen, 
and it slides onto the screen at the beginning. Let's put another bit of animation on that rectangle. Let's go to that rectangle and look at its opacity. We'll keyframe its current opacity at that position. We'll go back to the start of the timeline and we'll take its opacity down to zero. So there we go, our block fades up as our text moves in. And we could look at the way that animation works. If we click this animation, we can go into here and we can choose an ease in. So that'll slide it across quite nicely and ease it in as it moves across. Preview that in the browser. There we go, and nothing's happening. Ah, oh, that's because I've made it a really slow animation. But there we go, it slides in slowly and clonks into place. Let's fix the times of that. We've made them far too long. Let's drag all these keyframes off to the left. And here we hit something quite annoying, is that Edge doesn't let you do it that way. Edge, you actually have to select them in a different way. I'm just going to move them one at a time for quickness. There we go. We've now made this a lot shorter. If we preview in the browser, what's going on? Clonk, click to visit quilts.com. We've got easies, we've got transparency, we've got text animation. That's another thing. Let's hit another requirement for higher thing. Let's have rotation in there. Let's put a rotation on symbol one. We'll make that last the same length. So we're at the same point in the timeline. We'll go to the position, size, and motion path. There's lots of things you can select here for all the different things. What we're going to hit is the rotation. We're going to keyframe the rotation at the current position. We're going to go back to the start of the timeline and we're going to rotate that quite a bit just to make it fairly interesting. Now, if we preview in a browser, oops, we need to finish typing that in before we can preview in a browser. There we go. And that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Let's have a look. Symbol playback rotation. We didn't have the right keyframe settings on here because it's rotating from zero to zero. Just fix that by turning the number and remembering at this point to click the keyframe button, which is what we didn't do. And now we can see we've got that little colored bar that shows us an animation. There we go. We've got a little animation. Click to visit quilts.com and we can click it. So that shows you that you can take things further really quickly as well. You can bump your marks up by hitting more of the requirements. And I'd always advise you at this stage when you've created something to go back to the requirements and look at the things that you need to do for getting a higher grade. We'd like to put some embedded media in there, maybe a button you could click to show a video of some quilt making. We need events and actions and triggers. Those are shown in the other little uh, video that I've got a bit of um, demonstration for you. We could put a shadow on that. That's something we can do quite easily. We've put a fade and opacity in there. We've put some easing in there. We've adjusted our pacing. It isn't very good, we've adjusted it. We've got some timing in there. We've got a rotation. Other things we could do, we could use some vector graphics, special effects, lots of things we can do. But today I've just covered the basics for you and I hope that helped.